Okay, this is a video for the FIO FD5. That's them right there. That's the case that they come in and that's the tips that come inside that. It has a very nice storage case. It reminds me of a pimped out unique melody case where you can put the buds right there and then the rest it's got like a nice velour. It's actually really cool. Speaking of unique melody, this is a 3DT that'll be coming up. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel in the banner on the top right, there's the Twitter symbol and you can scroll down. I'm doing two minute Twitter reviews now, like summary, because some people don't want to watch my long videos. No, I don't blame you. This is the FD5 up close. It has an open screen. This is more for pressure relief and so you don't get driver flex, but it's not really giving me a lot of outside noise. So isolation seems to be decent. It's getting cold right now. The sun just went down about an hour ago. I got a heater behind me and I can't really pick it up while I was listening. It wasn't some stuff I notice it. The, uh, the Shosey Black Hole, an obvious one if you've never heard that. This is nothing like that. Might not be quite the same as a fully closed one, but I'd actually prefer this. It didn't seem to be mm, penalized in any kind of a way because of its design. It fits fine. Uh, the cable quality is good. It's actually really good. And again, the storage case, the tip selection, it is a nice presentation. Completely satisfied. And close that. Turn my head slowly. Move to the left. It is a 12 millimeter dynamic drive, 1.5 Tesla, beryllium coated DLC diaphragm. I believe it is a DLC diamond light coating um, dome. And the outside of the dome part of the diaphragm is the beryllium coated. So they're both coatings on top of uh, some kind of a PET mylar derivative and it stiffens the diaphragm to increase the performance. Take a look at the graph. The base is obviously elevated, the mids, uh, it's V-shaped, it's got a gain that's not that bad. It's about in the range of what I like. It's got the after peaks. It's The trouble is, I've explained many times, I don't have a set what I want. I want energy going all the way out past 16 if possible because there is stuff out there and it gives me a sense of energy. So I don't like the rapid drop. I just did a brief review for the blessing to the redone version of that and that falls off at 9k and it's kind of audible for some instruments i prefer this or version of this again the treble is a personal thing i don't find it to be uh fatiguing i don't find the bass even though the mid bass is quite up to be encroaching in vocals or other parts of the audio that is in the mid range and i'll give very specific examples go to the music For bass, Marvin Gaye, Sexual Healing, uh, Doobie Brothers, Tupac, Ambitions as a Rider, Led Zeppelin, When the Levee Breaks, Eurythmic, Sweet Dreams, Led Zeppelin, Days Confused. Uh, Doobie Brothers is a four-string bass guitar. Marvin Gaye is the 808 Roland. Violent Femmes is also a slack and four-string bass guitar. Uh, Mid-90s, West Coast deck hit. Uh, Daz Dillinger or DJ Quick? I don't know who did that one. I don't think it was Dre. Led Zeppelin, a uh, substantial kick drum. Eurythmics is uh, synthesizers and in keyboards and Led Zeppelin Days Confused is a four string bass. The low frequency check for this video is Black Sabbath Sweet Leaf. And let's go ahead and take a look real quick. This is it right here. I'm going to pause for a second and play a sample. <laughs> That. This is a drummer, and this is the sometimes the band's live versions or rehearsals very different from what they recorded on albums, and I'm not a fan of that. If you made something awesome and I've loved it, I don't want you to, you know, I'm an artist, I don't want to keep repeating myself. I like Sweet Leaf, so play it the way you did it. They, they nailed it right here. I'm not going to play it, turn up the volume, but the drummer is very busy right now very very busy and if you can see the bassist in the background he is very busy as well and that is too low frequency instrument look at him go he is going 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 those two instruments going at the same time it's kind of like a dual soul Tony I always like paying background rhythm guitar though that's not what he's doing compared to the other two though he is and Ozzy's waiting his turn 
it can kind of overwhelm and for drivers even hybrids where the dynamic is just taking care of the low frequency that lack of performance of technicality of ability can encroach over the mids and over the treble and create a veil that kind of decreases everything to almost a lo-fi replay in this and that little sample that I just played you back every bass note is clear it's very very clear the diaphragm is of good quality it's being stiffened by mm, the DLC and the brilliant and it, it is to my ear it is working this is a an example of a diaphragm outperforming its own graph graphs are good they don't tell you the whole story listen when possible everybody says that it's not a meme please do if you can this bass actually sounds good to me and and this particular song and that sample I just played you a drum and a bassist going at the same time um, I can pick up everything and there's a lot of times in the other gears where that gets kind of uh, hazy and lo-fi and on this set that's not the case at all it sounds very very good and that's before he starts uh, hitting the cymbals that I was talking about before timestamp 2 minute 30 to about I guess 338 right here if you're interested in it this video is awesome Black Sabbath Sweet Leaf Rehearsal um, going to the mids Fleetwood Mac Dreams. This is a track that opens with the basses, dun, 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 pretty much. And then you've got a woman's voice, which is kind of throaty and low, Stevie Nicks. I'll go ahead and play a sample right now. Fifteen million. Cool. One of the biggest selling albums of all time. The biggest? I can't remember rumors did really good that is a combination of a four string bass guitar which is existing in the bass and also a woman's voice that's kind of throaty and part of her fundamentals is also in the bass sometimes they can collide and one can decrease the quality of the other it's usually the bass being elevated and the bass guitar kick drums that are kind of mm, overwhelming the vocals a little bit and degrading the quality if you're familiar with the track in this case it's actually not doing that it sounds fine Stevie Nicks sounds perfectly placed she sounds exactly mm, relative to me in the playback she doesn't sound more distant she doesn't sound mm, decreased in quality it, she actually sounds quite good I was surprised this is one of the sets that I graph before I listen to it's I try not to but I did and I thought okay this is gonna be a challenge maybe that stuff on the diaphragm is gonna do its job and it actually is so I'm being specific Black Sabbath the drums and the bass guitar and their little dueling kind of solo going on there sounds crystal clear to me I can pick them both out very good I can hear the the sticks hitting the drums I can hear him pretty much every note on Fleetwood Mac dreams the bass intro and then Stevie Nicks and then both going at the same time Stevie Nicks doesn't seem to be getting um, degraded in her quality because of the bass is loose slow or performing in a, some kind of poor manner so that means that the mids though not graphing ideally are actually pretty decent because I'm, I'm attributing the vocals to that and also piano in other tracks mid frequency judge Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits, Fleetwood Mac, um, Dreams, Secondhand News, Sweet Leaf. I also do that because I just was talking about the bass guitar and the drums. Um, Meatloaf, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Go ahead and get out of here. Low frequency events and expectations like the kick drum for Led Zeppelin, also the four string bass. All of those came in fine. I had no issues. I won't get into that. Meatloaf. Paradise by the dashboard line. Da, 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 da. This has got a man and a woman, and they're singing. They're talk singing. They're in almost in an operatic tone. They're going back and forth. The, the, the range of the male and female singer on this track is exceptional. I believe they both performed on Broadway. I know they did. I checked on Wikipedia because it's just an impressive. There's like three stages to this song, like uh, Band on the Run by Wings total different changes three times um, it's it happens in this track too it sounds really really good trouble money foreplay it's been such a long time let me go ahead and take a look at that this is I've never watched this video I just thought this is live um, so let's 
if you are sensitive to high frequency sound, you know, rock and roll, guitar solos, keyboards, Boston wouldn't be your thing because these guys get nuts. Tom Schultz is a MIT grad, I believe. He made his own distortion pedals that Jeff Beck bought from him and other people. He's a very, very intelligent man. There's videos about him out there. I should actually take a look sometime. The sound is unique. There's some keyboards. You're getting a lot of energy. The distortion that he's using on the guitar. I'll play a little sample right now for you. <laughs> solo the high notes and also that vocal point right there on stuff that has an elevated or offensive treble can get grating and you know that it's not something that you can listen to for an extended amount of time this is actually done quite well I didn't get that feeling at all I got the detail and the resolution and I didn't get the piercing uh, low quality BA balanced armatures in the treble are not ideal ESTs I would prefer over what's happened in the past few months with the clairvoyance and the unique melody, um, the EJ07s. There's some sets that are just really, really, really good in the treble. And BAs, I don't think so. I don't think sets like the U12T and others really are keeping up now. I think they're showing their age because I have the U12T and I, I don't actually think it's that great, to be honest with you. I would prefer um, treble done with a dynamic driver that's tuned well. Um, illumination was so close it's still my reference and I'll go ahead and show you another graph this is actually not fair but I'll do it anyway the I'll overlay this this is the FD5 in blue it's, it's almost totally surrounded by the moon drop illumination in value the FD5 is much greater value it's half the price of the illumination in base I think the illuminations base is uh, I, I just like it better I think it's good um, the FT5 is good. The mids of the illumination might be one of the best of any single dynamic I've ever heard. Remember, that's this is my reference dynamic driver. A price be damned. Got to take one. Which one is it? My longtime EX1000 fave has been replaced by the illumination. I think the mids are better on the illumination. I think the treble is close. Again, it depends on what you like. It's saying that this kind of treble trajectory is good is... You, it depends on the library, it depends on the person's anatomy, it depends on what they like, just their own personal preference. It's hard to say, so bass can be done just a few ways. Mids can be done a couple ways, and treble can be done a lot of different ways, and it depends on what you want. So I'll put treble as the same because I enjoy them both. They do it different, they have strong points, but I enjoy them both. The stage on the FD5 sounds, because of its elevation points, to be larger, and also it's post maybe 10k elevation sound more spacious and detailed than the illumination resolution partly related to the stage and just maybe because overall performance the resolution seems a little bit higher on the FD5 so actually take a look at it the value of the FD5 the stage is bigger and the resolution is maybe a little bit better tonality overall would go to the moon drop illumination though it's not that big a difference actually but I've got to use the reference and why not go with my number one so I think the only one that's gonna look better than the illumination on this graph is the one that comes along and beats it and that'll probably not be for a quite a long time so that is that spider graph go back to the frequency graph really quick and then close this down so I think it is uh, I prefer this over the FH3 because the FH3 is using balanced armatures and in my mind I'm convinced that I can tell when BAs are in a set, especially in the treble. And I really am not a fan of that. I think the FH3 is the best that they've done. I think it's the best value that FIO has in its collection right now. If I had to take this or the FH3, I would actually take this. It's actually really good. Plays my library back quite well. Um, I think it's around $300. I don't know if it's being released yet. I think I read somewhere online that it might be around February. It's something that you consider, con should consider and get a listen to if you can. I think they did a very good job. Um, I wasn't a fan of their other, you know, FA9, FH7. Um, I always thought the FH1 was better, just overall enjoyable and fit. And this is 
a legit flagship for file and it's not priced stupid crazy so for the money that you pay I think you're getting back a good set obvious requests will be like VLON 01 and all that stuff fine um, not not today I won't be doing those comparisons so that's it thank you to file it's the FD5 12 millimeter single dynamic and it sounds really good using my music library bass sounds good mids are not being penalized by the elevated bass and the treble is your special rainbow what do you like um, I actually like this it sounds good and that is it <laughs>